Full time then at the Westfalen Stadion, and it ends with a scarcely believable full time score of Borussia Dortmund 3, Paderborn 3, uh, a last minute marker Royce um, equaliser, or almost last minute anyway, um, gives, gives Borussia Dortmund a I think a, a sort of hard-fought draw, but I mean, in in many ways, they didn't didn't even deserve the draw. Uh, you know, of course, Dortmund went in three 0 down at half time to Paderborn. You know, I, I'm about I'm about forty five minutes outside of Dortmund, and you could almost hear the jeers jeers and the boos and the hisses from here. It was quite extraordinary, really. But um, yeah, I don't even know where to start with the game tonight. Really, just so many um, areas and topics of conversation. So many areas of weakness that were yet again exploited um, by by Paderborn and, and so many weaknesses in the Dortmund team. It really does feel like Groundhog Day, though. The amount of times this season we've seen Dortmund's lack of lack of um, pace at the back, lack, you know, players who quite frankly don't seem up to it in the defence, players who are past their prime, or even just like Weigel, who I'm sure we'll get to, who you know are not centre halves. And yet again, Dortmund just completely exposed in the first half defensively. I mean, Paderborn ran them ragged. I think uh, the second minute, um, they had a, a Paderborn uh, broke on a counter-attack. Proger down the right-hand side, who had a brilliant game. Um, again, he beat uh, Schultz, who did not have a good game at all, um, all all day long for pace. Gets past him, and the Dortmund defence is completely at sea. There's um, Streli Mamba. Um, who scored two of the goals today, completely unmarked in the middle. He slapped it uh, into the Dortmund goal. 1-0, two minutes in to the game to Paderborn. And from that moment on, you kind of feared the worst, really, for, for Dortmund's sake. They went into the game. You looked at the lineup and you thought, OK, you know, it's defensively could be a bit light, a bit suspect with Weigel at centre-half, but, you know, they're playing at home to Paderborn. Uh, they're going to control most of the ball. Weigel at centre-half can be a, a brilliant kind of outlet in terms of a ball-playing centre-back. But it just went completely wrong. I mean, Favre could hardly have have picked a sort of more tailor made defence when you think about it for for Paderborn, who who we saw, who we saw um, a buyer on opening weekend of the season. We saw that their pace, if they can get in behind your defence, they can run at you, they can cause you all kinds of problems. And they were very unlucky to to not escape with a victory that day at Bayer, and and they'll feel very hard done by to have, to have not won here today as well. Um, it was just a complete uh, sort of, again, mish mismatch, really, in terms of, of, of the pace of the Paderborn attack and the slowness and the sort of pedestrian nature of the Dortmund defence. I mean, you look at the, the Dortmund back line. You also got Schultz in there, who is no doubt brilliant going forward. And, you know, when he has a three-man centre defence, you know, a, a, a back five, as it was for, for, so often for Hoffenheim, he has the extra, extra security of three centre-halves next to him. He can bump forward. He can put in those brilliant crosses like we know he can. But today, he was just completely outdone for pace, beaten by Proga on you know, far too many occasions. And yes, he got, he got forward on occasions, put in some brilliant crosses, as we know he can. But defensively, he looked completely at sea for large portions of that of the first half, was, was dragged off at half-time as Dortmund uh, used all of their substitutions by half-time. Interestingly enough, I guess they had to do something radical. Um, but again, you look at Lukas Piszczek at right back, who's been a wonderful servant for the club, no no doubting that at all. But you just kind of think he's, pa he's past his, his sell-by date, he's, he, you know, he's past his peak. Um, again, beaten for pace for um, for Paderborn's second goal, scored by Holtzman. Another, you know, loan signing for, for Paderborn, um, you know, who beat Piszczek. Um, sorry, no, I think he beat uh, Weigl, all ends up for pace. But again, Piszczek was just kind of was at sea, you know, for large portions of the game, he just didn't look at it. He was beaten on too many occasions, really. And then the centre-back partnership of, of Weigel and Hummels. And I, I, I barely think you can find a slower defensive partnership in the Bundesliga right now. I mean, Weigel was just every single time that a ball was played over the top. Weigel was nowhere to be seen. He was, uh, again, going back to the, to, the, uh, to the Holtman goal, which I believe made it 3-0. Um, you know, Weigel had had a good sort of a good sort of five or so yards advantage um, when the ball was played over the top, and Holtman just ate up that ground. You know, caught um, Weigel up, overtook Weigel, and was then completely in on goal. Wonderful finish at the near post uh, by Holtman. There was still quite a bit to do from a tight angle, but um, just the lack of pace, the lack of kind of 
they just didn't seem to have an answer for for what for Paderborn's counterattack. And it's been a while since I've seen a, a team get completely opened up on the counterattack as easy as that. It's been a long time since I've seen, I've seen it been that easy for a team to exploit it like that. And it really was kind of you know sort of secondary school, high school football where you know someone just knocks a long ball over the top. You've got a particularly fast striker who just runs onto it and, and knocks it into the net. And, you know, time after time in the first half in particular, Paderborn just kept doing that route one football, um, which, well, it's, it's harsh to say because it wasn't really route one. I mean, there was some intricate play before that. But just again, time and time again, you know, a burst of, of speed, a long ball over the top, and they were they were in. They were in on goal. And like I say, that they go in, you know, with a 3-0 lead at half time, complete value for it, you know, um, Strelly uh, Mamba was was brilliant. You know, two wonderful finishes from him. Holtman's goal was a wonderful finish, and like I say, I mean, you know, the the hisses and the jeers at half time from Dortmund fans. It really isn't something you often see. They're such a, a loyal fan base. They will back their team to the hills. But for Lucien Favre, I mean, he will he will think the writing is well and truly on the wall after that. The fans have clearly, for the most part, turned against him. If he still has a job on uh, by Wednesday night, he's going to need a huge performance at the new camp to kind of re-establish the faith in him as a manager. You know, they now Dortmund now find, find themselves five points behind the leaders Gladbach. But if Gladbach win on the weekend, they'll find themselves eight points behind already at this stage. Um, you know, and, and no one's really stood out apart from Gladbach in terms of, of being consistent so far. And to already find yourself eight points down, not a good place to be in for Dortmund. Um, for Paderborn, we do need to talk about them. This isn't just a Dortmund show. Like I say, they were brilliant in the first half. I mean, there were some superb performances. Proger was superb. Uh, I thought Collins at left back looked brilliantly as well. I think he's he's really kind of stood out for Paderborn so far this season. He, he's looked really good defensively. Could improve going forward a little bit with his passing and distribution, but he looks like a really kind of um, a really a player who could go on to do some really good things in the Bundesliga. Uh, Mamba as well, you know, someone who was playing third tier football last season, comes into the Paderborn, scored away at Bayer Leverkusen, scored two again today, looked superb, ran the Dortmund defence ragged, he was brilliant. Holtman as well took his goal superbly. Um, so there were some really good performances and pr performances from Paderborn, but I mean, it was just one of those. They come out for the second half, they have a 3-0 lead, and again, away at somewhere like Dortmund, any kind of mistakes are going to get pounced upon. Uh, there was a bit of a mistake early on and, and, and the ball is crossed eventually to, to Sancho, who's unmarked, slots away fairly sort of comfortably. And at that point, it's 3-1. And at that point, you're kind of fearing the worst of Paderborn. And to their credit, for the next 20 or so minutes, they weathered the storm. There was a chance for Marco Royce, which he squandered. And they did. Paderborn weathered it. They had a couple of half chances. Um, Mamba actually had a, a, a brilliant chance to make it 4-1 and to kill the game off. On about the 60 minute mark, uh, he kind of chested it, uh, rolled away again from Weigel and Humbles with ease, was in on goal, and on the half volley, just slid it just wide. And at that point, you're kind of thinking, ah, are they going to rue that? Are they going to rue that miss? Will this give Dortmund a kind of incentive to go and get this game and to go and at least get a point? You know, and that's exactly what they did. They came back into it, like I say, Sancho instrumental in making things happen. Eventually, they get a, get a free kick, uh, headed out poorly. Hummels hooks it back in, and there's Witzel, uh, who converts a header from close range. And, and the third goal was, was similar again. It was a scuffed kind of headed clearance from, I think, the Paderborn right back. I could, could be mistaken. Comes out to Sancho. Sancho, with a wonderful ball back in, picks out the head of Marco Royce, who simply can't miss from a couple of yards out. And, you know, that was on the 92nd, 93rd minute. And at that point, I mean, it's... It's too late for Paderborn to, to go and, and re reinstate their lead. And, you know, it'll be heartbreaking for, for the club, for everybody involved. You know, this was a big, big chance, M much like the Bayer Leverkusen game. A big, they took the lead, tw um, you know, twice in the Bayer game, threw it away. They went 3-0 up here away at Dortmund, and they've thrown that away as well. They still get a point, which, of course, they'll take a lot of heart from. But this really could have been a turning point in their season. You know, before this game, they were on four points. They were bottom looking like certain for relegation, but, you know, they played really well in spells this season. They just haven't had the the, run, the rub of the green. They haven't had the luck, whatever it may be. It just hasn't quite happened. And defensively, they were kind of exposed late on. 
with some naive defending, a couple of individual errors, and you can't give Dortmund that many chances to kind of punish you, and they did ultimately. So they can take a lot of heart from the performance. They'll take a lot from the, the points, I hope. I hope it can encourage them. You know, they're five points off safety now. It's it's not, you know, they would have liked to have been three points, but alas, it's not to be. But again, there's plenty there to work from. This game, the bye game, some other performances this season, they've really shown they have ability there. They have a good sort of game plan if they stick to it. Um, and again, it, it's certainly not over for them. They can drag themselves out of it, but they need to start making these these leads pay. I mean, that's now nine points they've dropped from winning positions, including today and, of course, the Bayer Leverkusen game. So plenty for that of Paderborn to take away. For Lucien Favre, this could make, this could well be the end. I mean, they, they did come out with a point, but the manner of the performance in the first half in particular was just so poor that they will be a lot of question marks over his future now. Will he be in charge for the Barcelona game? Who knows? If he is, they're going to need a big performance to get back to winning ways. They're going to need a big performance to kind of to reinstill the, the, the faith of the fans, I guess. Um, so many questions remain. Um, for Dortmund, similar frailties exposed in a humiliating kind of performance and even result. Yes, they've rescued a point, but this is not going to be what any of the Dortmund fans want to see going forward. What happens now for both teams? We await uh, to see. But uh, for now, that is the end of a crazy night uh, in Dortmund. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I've been Tom for Get German Football News, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the um, the weekend's footballing action.